when teacher says, you know, play forte, crescendo here, do crescendo there. How do we do that? And what does it mean? I mean, playing the notes louder or quieter, but. It's actually an illusion. Did you know that? Huh? It's an illusion. Yeah. So it's like magic, like illusion, you know, like uh, magic of hands. So it's making us believe that something is there, even though we're just doing some kind of cool tricks to make you believe that or make our audience to perceive it, right? So it's nothing that, oh, I'm like barely pushing on the note. Maybe you can do that on the first try, but how can you do that every single time, right? I mean, it's very difficult to micromanage that. You have to hear it, and when the sound decays, you're just very less fuss, you're much less fussy with your hands and your gestures. The more you start to involve your arm and your wrist and become bouncy, guess what? The piano is going to take it. Oh, powerful sound. That's what you want. It's going to give you like clunker. You know what I mean? But when you move very gently, very slowly, you're already not putting that much weight into the key. So we get the illusion of getting softer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So because that I think that's how the phrase goes, doesn't it? End of the end of a slur, and then it repeats again. So maybe write that down somehow. Um, the one thing again, the beginning, those two measures, um, musically speaking, what is it? I'll let you write it. Sorry. So the opening two measures, how do they set up the piece? Um. So it could be a harp, it could be a swallow, a beautiful bird floating from branch to branch. It could be whatever you want it to be, really. A dancer maybe is doing little pirouettes or something. So it's the idea of very smooth, um, which is hard because we are playing with both hands and you're passing it. But what you need to do is the trick of how you pass from one hand to the other. So again, I'm starting with calm arms. Now, left hand gets ready. As soon as I'm ready to play the right hand, it passes to the other hand and comes back around. So let me show you again. Lifts, comes back. Lifts, the right hand comes back. So when it's in faster tempo, Again, speaking of illusion, it's like little harp. We're pulling on the strings. Do you hear the difference? Yeah. It's... Yeah, but in order for us to be able to play that in fast tempo and feel good, you have to practice it slowly. So again, prep the left hand first, travel, right hand takes over, the left hand takes up comes back around, so it's a little bit of this, a bit. Hmm? <clears throat> ah, you know what? No cheating, don't use the paddle, do finger legato. Uh. Yeah, just for now, you will let it later, but don't right. worry. <clears throat> When your left hand finishes the thumb, don't let go until you're ready to play your right hand. Otherwise, there will be a big, you know, pause between. And don't break last. Don't break before the next uh, the, the slur ends because you're getting softer, but don't put a clear break in between. Do you understand? Which note is 
tuning up a little bit more. Where am I leading? Yes, let's call that. That's another really cool thing I've recently heard. Magnet note. Magnet means it attracts something, right? So that top note is going to be our magnet note and everything is going there and then comes back around. Okay. See if maybe that helps. Uh, just for the time's sake. Um, fourth measure where your right hand is going to that pinky, try not to let go. Here, let me scoot this down for a second. See, I'm still holding it. break the line because you're lifting and then yes and it sounds separated so yeah it's really okay. hard but you're doing a great job it's gonna be beautiful You know what? You know the piece. I trust that you don't have any problem putting your hands together. Let's now start ironing, ironing out all of the details. Take a section and just practice doing exactly what you just did. Okay, hands separately. And then when you feel you're happy with the results, put them together and see if that makes a difference. Okay, I would love to start bringing out in the WC your etude and Bach, in fact, um, different layers. Once we learn the notes, we kind of know how the piece goes, figure out all the fingering, that's like the groundwork. Now you're really starting to craft it. Um, have you ever done pottery before or watched? Yeah, actually. Okay, so they start with a glob of something, right? Like a clay, and it's not very beautiful to look at. It's just like a big blob. And so then a good craftsmanship, will, you know, they know how to do that. Have you done it before? I made a vase, but... Oh, okay. Uh, it's hard, right? Yeah. First, you have to throw it in the center, make sure it's not lopsided, otherwise it will look like really strange. Uh, and then with your hands, you're starting to mold it, you know, get rid of pieces and do the shape that you want. So let's just say we already mastered dropping the big blob in the middle of the, the rotating... What is it called? Um, yeah. wheel? A wheel? I think something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so now you're going to be starting to mold your piece, okay? So if not by next week, you know what, if you just focus on like the first two pages doing exactly the job that you just, practice section that you just did, it's going to be really great. I would love to hear the difference, okay? Okay. 